In this video, I'll show you how to make a pivot table using Google Sheets and also how to calculate joint marginal and conditional probabilities from that pivot table. So first, we have our data in our spreadsheet and we need to have categorical variables. You can also get away with a discrete variable that has a certain number of outcomes, but your table might be overly large if there's a lot of outcomes, just an FYI. So we are going to go to data up here in the menu and then pivot table and then push create. It will create a new spreadsheet for just our pivot table. And then we are going to choose the rows and columns and then put in the values. So over here in the pivot table editor, we're going to pick one of the categorical variables to be the rows. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Um, you might have a preference, um, but it, in reality, it doesn't matter. You can always switch them later. I'm going to choose for the row variable, did you eat breakfast this morning? And then I'll add in the column variable, how will you access the course this term? And now we need to get some data into the pivot table. And that is when we add in values. So we're going to click on the add and then just choose any one of the categorical variables from before the breakfast or the access of the course. And then there we go. That's our pivot table table uh, pretty quick there. You'll notice that there aren't zeros in the pivot table and that's just how Google Sheets works. If you want to see zeros in your pivot table, you can copy your table. So copy it, uh, command C, paste it somewhere. And then to paste it, you want to do not just a regular paste, but you want to paste special with the values only. So it's not referencing the previous sheet because it won't let you edit those cells. So then you go up and you find the cells that were blank and then go ahead and put in zeros. And it just might look a little bit nicer. It's still the same data. You can go back and edit your um, headers and add in uh, the pretty dividers for the grand totals if you like. But it's no, just nice to see those zeros in a lot of um, pivot tables. I also will probably align those so they're more centered. That just looks prettier. Okay. So next thing we're going to do is create um, probabilities from this pivot table. So I am going to go over to the values over here in the editor and I can change them to be percent of rows, columns, or grand total. Let's start with grand total. What we see here is inside the cells of the pivot table, we have all of those counts divided by 20, which was the grand total. So for example, four divided by 20 is 20%. So now we have a 20% in that space. Along the sides of the pivot table, this is also called the contingency table, is a, a marginal distribution. So this is the breakdown of how people access courses along the bottom. And if you look just at the side, this is the breakdown of how students um, ate breakfast, whether they did or they didn't. And then if we want to go even further and look at one variable related to another, we can do a, another calculation of a percent of row or column. So if I choose percent of row, what this means is that each row is now going to be a total of 100%. And it's not that we added or subtracted anybody, but we're just looking at one row at a time and saying, okay, you are the total. How did you fall into the other four categories? So for the people who didn't eat breakfast, we see about a 43, 57% split between desktops and laptops when they're accessing the course. Compare that or contrast that against the people who did have breakfast, they are split among four categories. Some people, almost a quarter, are accessing the course on their cell phone, uh, just a few on the cell phone and tablet, just a few on a desktop, and then well over half are accessing the course on a laptop. So that's for the percent of rows. It's a conditional distribution. We can also look at this as percent of columns, and now we're looking at cell phones as a whole. Did you eat breakfast? Yes or no was the question. So if I go over here to the laptops and only look at people who access the course on a laptop, I see that one third of them didn't have breakfast and then two thirds of them 
did have breakfast. So then you can go to all the other categories as well. So now you have a conditional distribution for the columns and then it's uh, split up by row. So these are about the four things that you can do with a contingency table or two-way table or pivot table. We can look at percents in the center, the joint distribution. We can look at marginal distributions, one for each side. And then we can also look at conditional distributions, one for rows, one for columns.